Good evening. Uh, would you mind giving us a brief overview <laughs> of the 12 officials tonight? <laughs> like in 20 minutes, the whole system so that a person can start to recognize these functions in their ordinary life, which is what it takes to really understand how the 12 officials work. So yeah, uh, I'll, I'll do this quickly. First you have the Noble Lord. The Noble Lord is asleep or missing for the most part. This is the basic theme of the Neijing, is that something has happened so that the heart no longer is on top, no longer commands the functioning of either the body or the uh, emotions. Nevertheless, he's, he exists and he is known about. In our society, in our culture, he is um, very abstracted. Usually some, some idealized figure such as the Lord Jesus or the people, depending upon your politics and, and metaphysics at this particular time. Our uh, noble Lord, from which power supposedly descends to the president, to the prime minister, is the people. This abstract idea that, that the people have intelligence and will and know better than any of the politicians what should happen. They are the noble lord, and of course it's utter absurdity, but that's beside the point. Another group, the noble lord, is Jesus. What would Jesus do? And their power comes from Jesus, their understanding of, of what needs to be done comes from Jesus, and their authority comes from Jesus. Using that authority is the function of the Xiangfu, the prime minister, uh, the, the, the CEO, the one that actually uh, decides how everyone else spends their time breathing the lung in and out. He controls who gets what kind of chi uh, and, and the, the rhythm that the whole uh, uh, organism functions in. He always has a number one. He has, like on Star Trek, Picard has a number one. This is the, the liver, the general, the, the guy who the uh, Prime Minister can sit down with, or the CEO can sit down with and strategize. Try to figure out, and, and, and you know that he's got your back. He's kind of like your attorney oftentimes, or, the, or in, a, in a corporate set, uh, setting, and oftentimes would be the, the, the attorney. Okay, is it legal? And how can we arrange it to get what we need done legally? Uh, what's the plan? The, it, in, in The Simpsons, it is the guy who works for Mr. Burns, the, the lackey, the, the guy who actually goes out and, 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 and arranges for what Mr. Burns to be done, done. When I worked for the city, there, there was, of course, the commissioner, who was the noble lord, and then there was the bureau uh, director, who was the CEO. And then there was the assistant purchasing manager. He wrote the budget. Pain in the ass. The, the, the head of the department, the purchasing manager, had to present it to the commissioner. But, it, but all the work in terms of you know, what money was going to be spent for what, what. The planning, the strategy, particularly in regard to defense and offense. Personal defense and offense. The... the Noble Lord, of course, can be uh, um, transcendental and can see life as just an experience to be experienced. The uh, CEO has to see things in terms of, okay, how am I going to manage this whole thing to move in the direction that the Noble Lord wants to go? The liver, the general, he has to figure out, okay, who's going to come at us, and how are they going to come at us, and what are we going to do about it? And how can we manipulate and arrange things so that we can get what we want? Wood element uh, in, in the Chinese five-phase system. Heart, fire, lung, metal, liver, wood. He's the guy who you sit and 
strategize with, and he um, gives you the downside, but in a very supportive way. You know that if, 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 if everybody else starts plotting against you, he's going to have your back. He's the one guy you trust. He's your general. Next down is the champion. General is a yin organ. He's up on the hill figuring out the battle plan. You need a champion. In the old days, if you went up against another kingdom, if you went up against another en enemy, save bloodshed, save money, save time. Each guy, choose one guy. Fight it out. Whoever wins, that army wins. Saves a lot of time, a lot of bloodshed. That's the champion. That's the gallbladder. Everyone needs one. Needs someone in you that will stand up and say, All right, come on. <laughs> I, I will defend the noble lord. I will put my body in front of anything that comes at him. This is a, a tough one to fill in this day and age when the noble lord is missing. And, and this is one of the dilemmas that is classic in drama. Iliad. There are going to be many popular film references in this discourse. But of course, with classical roots. Get Troy. Watch the first scene of Troy with Brad Pitt as Achilles. <laughs> yeah. This is a picture of the champion. His king, his noble lord, his father is dead. Got conquered by this Agamemnon emperor guy who's trying to rule the world. He doesn't believe in the noble. He has no noble lord, but he he works for the uh, uh, emperor, the CEO, the prime minister, and has a little bit of attitude because of how the whole thing has come down. Which is the classic champion of this day and age. He will still go and fight and 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 be the hero of the day because he'll take on the champion of the other side and defeat him, save a lot of lives, but his heart's not in it because the noble lord is missing. This is Han Solo. Has no real noble lord, but he's still on a crusade. He's still the champion. He's still trying to fight for what is right and true. Any group of people, any enterprise needs a guy like that. Needs someone who, when you have an asshole, comes up against you, will take him on so you don't have to if you're the shown fool, if you're trying to run things. Uh, in classical uh, gong fu schools, somebody comes to town and challenges the master. The master doesn't go out and fight him. <laughs> you, you, you start with the gallbladder with the with the champion you get past him okay then you got a shot every every organism needs someone who's willing to stand up and fight for the uh, prevailing order next official down from the gallbladder is the envoy envoy is very very key official because it is it is she who can communicate the joy the ecstasy the awe that comes from the noble lord classical days when you had two kingdoms the way you made a bond between them a, a, a peace treaty essentially one king would send his younger daughter to the other kingdom when she was about 12, 13, just becoming uh, 
sexually active and full of life and spirit. Uh, raised in one kingdom, sent into another kingdom to learn their language, their ways, marry their prince. She serves as the envoy. She serves as the, the tentacle from one kingdom into another so that there's a problem, uh, you communicate through her. She speaks both languages. She knows both cultures. She has loyalties to both sides. She is your envoy. This is the classical model, and of course, she is the key to the heart, really. And the part of a person who, in spite of the fact that we're under attack, can come out and connect with somebody else. What organ does she pick? Mm, which organ? That's a, that's a question. See, there's no internal organ that corresponds to the pericardium. She actually was a later addition. In some parts of the Neijing, they speak of five yin organs and six yang organs. They leave her out. My theory on this is that she developed as civilization developed, and the need for protection of the noble lord got stronger and stronger, so you needed some part of the noble lord to go out as a minister and connect with the rest of the world. It's like a new organ. But it doesn't correspond to an internal organ. It corresponds to the fascia around the heart, the pericardium, the heart protector. It's like body is uh, held together by connective tissue. When it has a shock, connective tissue contracts, protect the heart. Frost, cold, uh, shock, the way the body responds to trauma, to attack, pull in, protect the heart. And, and when it's safe and it's possible for the heart to reconnect again, pericardium relaxes, opens up, so the, 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 the joy of the heart can come out. This is the key to current human pathology, in my opinion. And the heart of, or the key to, or the envoy of the, the the medicine that I teach in practice based on the 12 officials. Pericardium is Little Miss Sunshine. She's a beautiful artistic representation of that force, that her noble lord may be Miss America, but something of the true love of the heart comes out and communicates with everybody else. Of course, she, she is way down in terms of political power. Her father, who is the Xiangfu, who is the prime minister, has much, much more power, but he hears in her the voice of the heart and follows. And how can... Underneath, underneath the, the, the uh, younger daughter who... Uh, transmits the love of the noble lord is, of course, the mother, the stomach, the cook. Any organization, any enterprise, you need somebody who's going to cook. This, this may be seen like a very mundane uh, function in terms of, you know, this subtle political interplay between uh, officials. But the fact is, you don't feed people right for one day, and you have a Absolute political chaos. Everybody revolts and, 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 and there's fighting. If you have someone who will make sure everyone has what they need, gets fed, someone who brings the, uh, 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 I forget what they call that, hors d'oeuvres, <laughs> or the snacks, you know, or someone who cooks, the, who, who will, in spite of everything else that's going on, no matter how intense, will realize People are hungry. They need to be fed. They're not going to be happy if they're not fed. And we'll take care of their physical needs. The mother. 
you you have to have this in, in any situation. Some of the more interesting uh, cinematic illustrations of this, like like uh, Little Miss Sunshine and Master and Commander, which are required viewing for this course, you can see that's where the real problem is. Nobody feeds these people. <laughs> Nobody makes sure that they feel satisfied physically in their bodies. You need somebody who will willingly and lovingly do that, care for people, or the whole thing falls apart. Essential function. And you need the next official down, which is the grandmother, the spleen, the servant, the old woman who will bring the prime minister's dinner to him, who will take care of the, the details of his life, who will get him a cup of tea if he's uh, thirsty. She, she is, uh, uh, she lives only to serve the Lord, and the Lord being missing, she will take care of whoever is above her. This is not a popular official in this day and age, and it's one of the reasons that groups of people have the most trouble, because nobody wants to be a servant. Nobody wants to just take care of other people. This is uh, a real problem. Then you have the fool. No, no, no. First you have the asshole. Asshole has more problem, more, much more power than the fool. Asshole is the large intestine, the container that receives the shit and pushes it out. This is a very difficult office, and it's a dual office. A, there's the holding of the shit, and B, there's the pushing it out. This is the heretic and the executioner. They're a, they're, they're a dual function that is the responsibility of the large intestine. And oftentimes they are embodied in the same guy. Nobody likes the executioner. Nobody likes the hitman. He's kind of dirty. You know, there's, there's a kind of icky feeling about him. Uh, Godfather, a, a, a great one in, in the opening scene where, the, where there's this really huge, ugly guy trying to figure out the right speech for Don Corleone. And uh, nobody likes him, nobody's around him, everybody has an aversion to him. But the fact is, you need somebody whacked, he's your guy. <laughs> everybody projects all their negativity on the asshole. Every group has an asshole. Every group has someone people don't like. People put their shit on. And oftentimes, he's the best guy to tell people, you need to leave, <laughs> if you can get him to do it. And, and oftentimes, he, he, because he is partners with the uh, uh, Xiongfu, with the prime minister, they're both metal. Lung is the yin metal organ. Large intestine is the young metal organ. That's why oftentimes, if you don't have enough people, the boss has to be an asshole. He's the one that cuts the dead wood, flushes out the, takes out the trash. Got to have somebody who's willing to do that. Oftentimes, in this day and age, they hire a consultant to do it. <laughs> Come in, cut what isn't really assimilable and functional and helps the organism as a whole get rid of it painful thing to face in life, that this is part of the life process. Things come in, things go out. The going out part of it is the responsibility of the asshole, the function of the executioner and the heretic. Heretic is, you know, he, he has ideas significantly different than the uh, prime minister. He's his polar opposite. And in traditional Judaic culture, this was called the Satan, the devil's advocate, person who presented the other perspective. 
the heretic. And generally the one you had to get rid of eventually. Or he got rid of himself. He gets pushed out. Well, there's his younger brother, the fool, the small intestine, who is the closest companion of the noble lord, is the young half of the noble lord. If the noble lord radiates light and understanding, the fool, the small intestine, radiates irony and foolishness. Uh, it, 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 these indigenous cultures that still retain uh, part of their connection with, with these ancient functions, once a year they will have a festival in which the, 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 the town idiot will dress up like the bishop and parade through the streets just making trouble. It will be the lord of misrule. This is the fool. And, and he is an essential part of any organism. He is like the child that sees that the emperor doesn't have any clothes. But he, he is innocent. He doesn't really realize that this is heresy. So he's not the heretic. Because he does it out of love. He just says, it appears to me the guy doesn't have any clothes on. He's a fool, politically. And you need someone who's willing to do that, who's willing to say what it is that they really see. And even if, even if it makes them look like a fool and everybody laughs. If you don't have someone who will do that, first of all, it won't be any fun. Because you can't laugh. You need laughter. He brings uh, a laughter, a belly laugh. That's what the small intestine is, is for. But he also separates out the kernel of truth from the bullshit. That's what happens in the small intestine. You separate the pure nutrients that the body needs and push the ship all then down into the large intestine. With the champion, you get past him, okay. It's interesting how much power the fool has. You know, he's actually fairly up. Uh, not as high as the asshole. The squeaky wheel always gets the grease. The guy that makes trouble, you take care of before the guy who's just in an idiot. But the smart aleck, he has a lot of power. And it's odd that under him is the technical expert, the kidney. But that's one, that's one of the ironies of life. That, that the guy who knows how to fix and keep the uh, uh, technical part of the enterprise going is way down on the totem pole. He's the guy that, that if the projector doesn't work, knows how to fix the projector. He's the guy that takes care of the accounting, takes care of the money, uh, the treasurer. Any organization, the treasurer is like, does all the work, really, and has no power or glory, is really considered a drone. And, and usually the person who takes this function in, in any organization doesn't wish to stand out, likes to stay below decks, and takes joy in knowing how things work and, and help technically and, and helping facilitate their technical workings. On a ship, like in Master and Commander, the, 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 the kidney, the, the technical expert, has a very, very small part. He is, uh, you, you know, on a ship, he is the shipwright. These were guys that sailed on these English ships who quite literally could build a ship with their hands and, a, and an axe. They could make anything that needed to be made that, that a ship needed and kept the damn thing afloat hole poked in it. They were the ones that went down and figured out how to plug up the hole and then how to repair the ship. They were really amazing uh, uh, craftsmen. Uh, and, and the whole enterprise was absolutely dependent on him. In Master and Commander, he shows up two or three times. You know, as this guy down below deck plugging a hole, you know, the, the cannibal balls made. And 
and they need him, and they rely on him, and these guys were amazing. But don't poke very high up in the, in, in the hierarchy, but without the technical expert, then you're screwed. As was the case in Little Miss Sunshine. They had nobody who knew how to do anything. Nobody that knew how to make the car run. Nobody who knew anything about the rules of the pageant or the money. They were screwed with the whole thing until they found at the very end this technical nerd, this, this, this computer geek who told the woman running the pageant that, well, you know, it's not that hard. We can just go in and, and he knew how to do it. You got to have a guy like that or you're screwed. Uh, and that, of course, oftentimes is what makes a, uh, an, an enterprise uh, uh, full of fools, uh, which is one of the more interesting dramatic uh, um, themes. Um, that's oftentimes what they're missing, is, is, is someone who really knows how things work, technically, physically. Lots of people have big ideas, lots of people have vision, lots of people have fight and spirit. Not many people know how things work so that they can keep them working. And for the most part, they're down below decks. Scotty in Star Trek periodically calls up, Captain, it's gonna blow! <laughs> ah, if you can make it work, you know, go down there and plug the holes. This is the kidney. This is the technical expert. This is the uh, uh, water element. Contains the basic energy and, and, and works with the basic energy that the whole thing is dependent upon. And the thing that, and the official that tends to get most abused uh, and taken advantage of in the contemporary world. That's why so many people have kidney problems. Below him is another non-physical organ. This is the most mysterious of all of them, except perhaps the noble lord. And he is also a fire official, also part of the lord's court, but he is way down, next to the bottom. This is the triple warmer. Ministerial fire, minister of the, of the noble lord, but he's down next to the lowest organ, and he doesn't correspond to a physical organ. The triple warmer is the whole thing divided in three. In other, in, 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 in other words, they call the lower warmer from the navel down, the middle warmer from the navel to the diaphragm, the upper warmer, the, the diaphragm up. And the, the, so there's no organ, it's, it's just this idea that there are three sections to the abdomen and those sections have to be balanced and harmonized and, and, and work together. It's almost, it is, sometimes they use the term thermostat for the triple warmer. The triple warmer is the priest. This is a secret esoteric teaching that maybe only I in the entire Chinese medical profession has discovered. But you need someone who can, can connect the levels, can connect heaven with earth and earth with heaven, can put everything together, like in the old days, the village priest, the The one person who had the ear of the noble lord, he was his minister and was responsible to him even more than the, all the steps above him, including the prime minister. But, but he also had that function with the prime minister. In other words, he was conscience. He was the conscience of the court. In Celtic Christianity, before the Romans 
came in and eventually took over the Celtic Church. There was an ecclesiastical function called the Anamkara, soul friend. Someone with whom you could talk and lay out what your situation was and through that process could see what your soul's path was. After the Romans took over and distorted the concept radically, it came into the Roman church's confessor, chaplain, the guy that the CEO tells his sins to or tells you know, presents his situation and through whom he gets reconnection with the divine. Movie Master and Commander has the most brilliant presentation of this official and this function uh, in, the, in the modern age. In this movie, there are two main characters. The captain, uh, what's his name? You know his name? Mm -hmm. It's this Australian guy, the that, that gladiator, and what's his name? Oh, oh, uh, Ro um, Richard Crow. No, Crow. Crow. Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe Russell Crow. Russell Crow is the captain, and he's absolutely brilliant. He is the perfect prime minister. He is the perfect Xiang Fu. He does the job really, really well. And he, he has a close friend who is the ship's surgeon, the ship's doctor. He, you know, which is really relatively on a ship, is a fairly low position. He's down below decks trying to keep body and soul together under a battle, trying to keep people alive. But his other, his other activity is talking with the captain, hearing how the captain is is doing with the whole thing and and presenting the needs and concerns of the other officials and the crew as a whole so the so that the captain just get totally carried away with his delusions of grandeur he understands that there are other people involved here he's the conscience of the Ship. He is the priest, which was what the priest originally was for. And he lives close to the people, avoids positions of power, and tries to serve as just someone who can reconnect uh, the other officials and the uh, people with the noble lord. And the last official is oftentimes the one that everybody associates with the uh, emperor. He's the bladder. He is the one that actually makes everybody do what they do. On a, on a ship, he's the bosun. In other words, he's the lowest officer who carries around a little whip and makes the crew do what needs to be done. You've got to have a guy like this in yourself as well as in any organization. Somebody who will crack the whip. Somebody who will get you up off your ass and get you moving. Ain't a lot of philosophy, ain't a lot of, you know, uh, brute force. And the fact that that, that is the uh, representative of the hierarchy, the power that goes all the way up to the noble lord, comes down to, the uh, on the battlefield, the platoon sergeant. The guy that says, you know, either you're going or you're going to get shot. And I'm going to do the shooting if need be. Well, no, maybe I've got an asshole who will do it for me. 
<laughs> but where the rubber meets the road and you're just dealing with the sheep, with people who are slaves, who people, with people who just basically live uh, under the lash. The guy who wields the lash is the, is the uh, bladder, uh, the provincial governor. In, in this ideal Chinese society, of course, you have the noble lord, and you have his prime minister, and you have his general, and then you have his champion, and then you have his envoy, you have the, the, the king's mother and grandmother, and, and then you have the guy who knows how to build castles, the, and, 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 and you have the high priest, and then you have the provincial governor, the, the guy out there who, 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 who makes the natives produce what is needed for the kingdom. It's all official.